Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I need a word from God. Tell them, say, I ain't playing, I ain't playing, I ain't playing. Listen, it's Easter Sunday. Don't make me resurrect you. Y'all hear me? Don't make me resurrect you. Look at your neighbor and say, if you're saved. And there's any day that you ought to be praising God. Tell them today is that day. Y'all miss that. Y'all miss that. Y'all miss that. There are certain days of the year that don't need no preacher to help you render what is due unto God. Certain days, certain staple seasons of the year that you ought to just walk up in church with your mind ready to give God your best praise. And I believe that Resurrection Sunday is one of those days. Quickly, come on, go with me to the book of Romans, the book of Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans, the eighth chapter. Y'all pray for me. This is my third time on the same message, and so I need... I need a new revelation for today. Amen. Romans, the eighth chapter, verse number one. Here's what it says. Romans, the eighth chapter, verse number one. I'm reading from the NIV version. You can read from whatever version you have. And I believe that God is going to meet us in the same place. It says, therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, because it was weakened by the flesh, God did it by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he commended, he condemned sin in the flesh. If you don't mind for just a moment today, key verses found in verse number one, I'm going to preach from there. It says verse number one again, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I, I want to speak from a subject matter if you allow me to. I'm going to put it churchy in this service. It's called Don't Give Up Now. If you don't mind, come on, find somebody better looking than you on this Easter morning and look at them and say, Don't give up now. Amen. You may be seated. Don't give up now. God, give me strength and courage to preach this word today. Don't give up now. Uh, can I slow walk the text today? I'm a, one of the challenges, one of the challenges of preaching uh, staple services is the art of containing the attention of the believer because so many people already know the purpose of the day. Uh, when we come to uh, certain services, Christmas time, we know we're coming to celebrate. Uh, the birth of Jesus. Mother's Day, we know we come in to celebrate Mary and all the other biblical mothers in the text. Father's Day, we don't come to church. And, and then we understand something here. We under, good to see you, Gary. We understand here that, that, that when it comes to Resurrection Sunday, um, people basically know why we come to church today. We, we come to church because we want to celebrate um, not only the, the, the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but we, we, we come to celebrate the fact that the promise of him getting up took place. Don't ever get it twisted. The whole purpose of this is not about bunnies and eggs. It's, it's not about those things. And I'm not going to throw off on that because I think it's good for kids to have Easter egg hunts. Amen. Uh, you had them when you was young and you turned out to be. Well, maybe we should rethink that one. Amen. So. We understand something here. We understand that uh, we, we come to church for the resurrection. So all about uh, raising up. And, and this is really uh, one of the pinnacle uh, activities or uh, staple events that takes place for the believer. Because everything that we say we believe literally hinges upon uh, the stands of him getting up from the dead. We, we understand everything about this. And so when we begin to understand this, we begin to see that Holy Week is a unique season for us. It's a unique season for us. And every born again believer, I want to challenge you next year to take some time out to make sure that you can participate in the Holy Week services that you may see. I want you to take some time out. The reason why this is so important for us is because of the fact 
that Holy Week is much more because some of us rush to the resurrecting of Christ and we miss out on the processes um, that he did. I know, I know we celebrate God as being the uh, ultimate uh, deliverer, uh, but I want you to also understand that he is a phenomenal example. Uh, his son Jesus is the phenomenal example of how mankind should be. And so when you begin to look at the processes of the, the week, you find that there are certain things that take place um, that should always be reminded to the believers of who he is because he's not only teaching us what he can do but he's also teaching us how we should be and if we had more people walking around being more like Christ we'll find ourselves in a much better predicament than we're in right now and so now we find ourselves in this position and what I love about um I love about this, uh, this, this, this particular season uh, of, the, of the body of Christ is that it shows us something that really begins to mess up so many other people. See, we got to understand something here. A lot of people don't come to church because we do such a fine job of fine tuning people and dissecting and discerning who should be receiving grace and who should not be receiving grace. And because of this, it sometimes Sometimes rubs people the wrong way because they struggle in seeing how you now who have gotten parts of your life together uh, can look at somebody else and tell them that they're going to hell because they no longer they're doing what you used to do <laughs> y'all missing me y'all not talking to me and, and so when you understand this it becomes now a unique uh, situation uh, um, where we have so many people who don't come to Christ because we have not fully taught them on the uh, the, the activities of God we have not taught them on the love and the compassion that we have not taught them on the extent that God goes to to make sure that everybody is able to be with him in heaven uh, we got to understand the word of God says that it's not my will that any man should perish and so we understand that whatever we've done, whatever we're doing, no matter how far we've been, God is still, uh, and he's concerned about your prosperity. God is concerned. And I'm not talking about your financial stability. I know we've made that the new God. I'm not talking from that standpoint, but I'm saying that God is concerned about your soul and God desires for your soul to be saved regardless of what you've done. You're looking at me like I'm crazy, so let me dig deeper. When, when, when um, imagine us in heaven, uh, walk with me, preachers. Imagine us in heaven. Imagine us walking around heaven, and as we're walking around heaven, imagine us. We're in heaven <laughs> with all of the sinful nature of who we are. Imagine us in heaven, and we're on the east side of heaven, and we run into Osama bin Laden in heaven. Uh, many of us would have a problem with God because uh, how in the world that's what I use right now how in the world did Bin Laden make it to heaven yeah yeah some of us will be messed up we'll be trying to figure out how to get away because uh, it seems not to make sense that Osama Bin Laden could be in heaven uh, I'm not saying that he's there I'm just asking a question and my other question is uh, uh, you leave from Osama Bin Laden and uh, maybe you walk by Adolf Hitler and you saw Adolf Hitler there in heaven how would your response be uh, if Adolf Hitler was there in heaven many of us uh, would have a problem with that look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor I have a problem with that I have a problem with that Many of us will have a problem with that because of the fact that we have mastered in uh, deciding who gets to go to heaven and who gets to be rejected from heaven. Y'all, y'all not going to talk to me today. Uh, so many of us, uh, we, 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 we've been to that position where we, where we literally have decided who is uh, qualified for heaven and who's not qualified for heaven. Uh, I got a problem with that because uh, um, the text teaches us in John 3 16 that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever does something watch this not not 
whosoever sins um, not whosoever is perfect not whosoever got it all together but but whosoever does one thing believe on him uh, the text says that if you believe on God uh, yeah, that you're able to have eternal life I need you real quick uh, to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor he ain't crazy tell him he just talking scripture he just talking scripture and so so many of us I've uh, uh, messed up your whole theology right now because your theological perspective has put people into heaven because of how they act and I want to say to you that your actions may be wrong look at somebody else and tell them I'm so glad for grace uh, because your actions may have been wrong but we find something here I'm going someplace we find something in the midst of this process we find that yes it's possible that Osama bin Laden. It's possible that Adolf Hitler. It's possible that Jim Crow. It's, it's possible that some of the people uh, who have done some alarming things in our society uh, could be in heaven. And, and be, my brothers and my sisters, before you even get a, a little twisted in the face with me, you ought to start praising God because the reality is uh, if they can make it, that showed up me that you can make it. Here we have we got this other guy in the Bible. His name is Judas. Judas is this dude who is selected by Jesus to be in his inner core. Let me say that again. Jesus is sent to the world that no man should perish. The man who is sent to the world that no man should perish now selects 12 individuals to walk closely with him. And as he selects the 12 individuals to walk closely with him, one of the 12 betrays him. Now, note this. Everything about the cross, I want you to learn this today. Uh, We're we going to shout in the end, but I just need you to learn something first. Uh, every, every activity of the cross was all calculated and prophesied. Every activity of the cross was calculated and prophesied. Now, now that's key because I want you to act, I want you to understand this. Jesus is not hanging on the cross clueless about what's getting ready to happen next. Jesus is fully in understanding of what it is. How can Jesus be fully understanding what it is? Because he must understand something here. You got to understand that as he's 100% humanity, he's also 100% divinity. So therefore, he, he's always having a conversation with God. Uh, and, and watch this, as he's on the text, or as he's on the cross, uh, we find now that Judas does something for him before he even gets to the cross. Judas, he begins to do something. But what Judas did was, uh, uh, he sold him out. He sold Jesus out. Now watch this. Um, before they even get to the selling out portion, uh, Jesus calls all 12 other disciples into a space. Uh, when he calls them into the space, he begins to have conversations with them and he begins to open up the language by saying some of you are not going to understand what I'm about to say from there Jesus begins now to, he begins to say that one of you are going to betray me and when he says this the disciples begin to be astonished by the fact that Jesus has opened his mouth and said one of you are going to betray me uh, now what happens is uh, they begin now to murmur amongst themselves and as they're murmuring amongst themselves they begin to ask the question they begin to ask lord is it i and then jesus now responds back he says uh, uh, you're gonna know exactly who it is that's going to betray me uh, because i'm going to dip this bread and i'm gonna serve it up to them and when i serve it to them i want you to recognize that that is the one that is going to betray me watch this uh, like watch this jesus again he's 100 percent divine he's 100 percent human he dips it he serves it and the moment that he begins to serve it the text begins to show us that Judas immediately accepts the bread and does not refute God refute Jesus in the process he's not I can't believe you gave this to me he's not shocked by I can't believe you the one that said I'm gonna be the one that's going to betray you watch this here he's not shocked because earlier in the text it says uh, that when they entered in the enemy had already entered into Judas and so he was already poised to be the one to get poison y'all missed that he had already set him up to be 
be the one um, that was going to betray him. Listen to me. And so what happens now is uh, when Jesus gives the bread to him, he takes the bread and Jesus begins to have further conversation. When he has further conversation with him, he says, I need you now to go and do what you got to do. And I need you to do it quickly. Watch why. I need you to do it quickly that the scriptures may be fulfilled. Can I talk to somebody in here? Because I want you to understand again that nothing is catching him by surprise. Look at somebody and tell him, say nothing. It's catching him by surprise. And so now Judas gets up from the table. When he gets up from the table, he goes now. And when he goes, he begins now to instruct the Roman Empire where Jesus is. He says, I know exactly where he at. I'm going to take you to him. And so what happens is uh, Judas sells Jesus out for an exchange of finances. And some of y'all looking at me crazy like I cannot believe that Judas sold Jesus out for some money and the reality is you've been selling them out yourself for your little dollars that you've been trying to get because you ain't been worshiping because all you want to do is make that money honey and you still ain't rich and I'm saying to you that you got to understand watch this watch this I'm saying to you um, that Judas sold them out when Judas when he recognized that he had messed up when he recognized that he had made a mistake the text says that Judas does something Cameron the text says that Judas Judas begins now to repent. When I heard the word repent, I begin to say, oh my gosh. So Judas gave his life to the Lord. And then in my further readings, I discovered that this repentance is not unto the Lord, but instead he repented to himself he repented to himself he began to repent because how he thought it was going to play out it did not play out and so when he recognized that what he had done didn't play out the way he expected the text says that Judas now goes back and he tries to give the money back to those who gave it to him for the exchange of the son of God and what began to happen now is when they saw Judas coming back and trying to get the money oh, the leader leadership said we are not touching that money because that's blood money y'all missing this he said that that's blood money we're not gonna touch it uh, he says as a matter of fact what you can do is you can go bury that stuff but we ain't gonna touch that money because that's blood money fast forward McCray let's go and so we find that something begins to happen now what begins to happen now is Jesus Jesus is now walking through the streets he's headed to his final destination and as he's walking through here the people they're calling him all kind of names he's taking lickings already the people have talked bad about him they've been spitting on him they've been abusing him and then finally Jesus he gets to the position where he's supposed to be and the text shows us that now there's a world rugged cross that is on the ground it's going this way and going this way it's a cross there they begin now to take Jesus hands and they begin to nail his hands to the cross I can imagine that at the moment that they hit his hands with the nails I can imagine that his nerves begin to drop I can imagine when they drill the nail in his head I can imagine that his mind went to a different location and they begin to drill his hands and when they begin to nail his hands they did not stop there but they instead they turn his legs over and they begin to nail his feet I can imagine that shock waves was running up down his spine I can imagine that he's in a delusional state of mind right now because now is the time for the work of the Lord to be excited. Can I tell somebody real quick? Now, I ain't telling you you're going to have a wood cross, but can I tell you that whenever you get ready to do the work of God, you two are going to have to go through some mental anguish and pains because God's work don't come without a test. Slap somebody. High five and tell your neighbor, say God's work don't come
come without a test. And so now here, I'm almost there. So now here we find that something begins to happen. He's nailed now. He's nailed hand and feet. He's sitting there. He's laid on the cross. Body is exposed. Flesh looks torn. And as he's laying here on the cross, they begin to put things into motion. They begin to mess up and they slipped because what they did was nailing him on the ground was one thing but when they begin to raise up the wood the wood had attached to it the savior and when they begin to raise the savior something started to happen because the text said that if I be lifted up from the earth I look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor say when they raise him up tell them say it resonated with me ah yeah because the moment that they begin to raise him up he says I'll draw all men unto me and so now Jesus he's up on the cross he's hanging in between forsakenness uh, foolishly he's hanging in between foolishness and hanging in between faith Uh, foolishness says if you are the son of God come down and rescue yourself and take us with you but the faithful over here the one that says something really begin to speak to his spirit and he said Lord oh, when you enter into your kingdom I just need you to do one thing I need you to remember me I don't know who I'm talking to today but the foolish one wasn't saying I ain't been guilty of what I've done the foolish one was not saying that I ain't been the sinner that I am but he's saying I understand that if I set my mind to believe in who you are that I too got rest I need somebody real quick slap a neighbor high five and tell your neighbor say in spite of what all you've done tell him say the same power still works for you I don't care how bad you've been I don't care how much you messed up I don't care how many people you cuss how many people you had sex with I don't care how much you stole how many times you cheated on your taxes I'm saying to you that if you ask God to remember you that remembrance is going to be your I need somebody to catch that in your spirit open your mouth and shout out Lord remember me Oh, I'm almost there. So now something begins to happen. The first word, I found something that is true, Martel. I found that whenever you begin to think about conversation and speech, there's two times in particular that people really get excited about conversation. The first time that people really begin to get excited about what is spoken is when you have the first words. Yeah, when the baby comes out you get excited about the first words because you want to hear that baby say mama or you want to hear that baby say dada and so with the moment that you hear them speak it has significance to you um, we hear Christ upon the cross he says something in the first words look at somebody say the first words he says something in the first words he says father uh, I see what's happening I know what's going on he says but I need you to forgive them for they know not what they do in other words I know that I'm on this cross I know that I've been drilled in my hands I know that it seems to be uncomfortable but I also know that they would not be doing what they're doing if it was not for what the word had already prophesied side to take place uh, feel the Holy Ghost uh, and so now Jesus uh, Jesus is in the midst of this process uh, and he's asking God uh, forgive them for they know not what they do uh, and the text shows us uh, that now he goes through uh, making promises and pledges uh, he tells the guy on the right uh, he says today thou will be with me in paradise uh, which shows me that I don't have to wait a long time uh, for God to give me restoration I don't have to wait forever for God to give me healing and I'm not sick and tired of some of y'all church folks who put people up and set them up that they got to go through all these jumps loops 
mountaintops in order for them to have restoration with Christ. And the reality is, uh, if you ain't have to go through it, why you think they got to go through it? Uh, matter of fact, y'all ain't talking to nobody here today. Uh, come on, holler back at your boy if you know what I'm talking about. And just slap somebody high five and tell them, say, neighbor. When God forgave me, tell him, say, I ain't have to go through no hoops. Tell him all I had to do was believe. And so now Jesus is on the cross. I'm almost there. Jesus is on the cross now. And as he's on the cross, the Bible says that he's there. And the final word that he says on the cross, it really began to bless me. The final word on the cross, he now goes through all this anguish. He's through all this pain. And Jesus on the cross he begins now to look up to heaven and he begins to mumble something to God he begins to say father into thy hands I commend my spirit this really began to bless me it blessed me because it showed me that even though their hands were on him they still had no control over him y'all missed that even though their hands was on him even though they had been beaten him they still had no control over him and Jesus does something he turns and says and to thy hands father I commend my spirit in other words he recognized that the work had now been accomplished that it had now been finished that he had now been established and it was nothing else for him to do but to turn it over to God have you ever been there when you know that you had done all that you could do and you still didn't see it getting any better yet and you had to learn how to just turn it over to God I need somebody real quick to just grab your neighbor by the hand and say neighbor tell them there's going to be some times that you got to learn how to just turn it over to God well we find something happening here something begins to happen in the text what begins to happen in the text was Jesus is now he's up there and as he's dying literally watch this nobody takes his life he gives up the ghost he finally says it's time for me to let this be done because everything that I'm called to do has already been established and the text says that after he had done so that now there is a Roman soldier a centurion soldier that is at the foot of the cross and when the soldier sees what has taken place the Bible says that the soldier begin to shout out one word he says surely huh? he says surely we've made a mistake he says this man is the son of God and it began to give me a reason I feel like preaching here today it gives me a reason to celebrate because when I think about all that the soldier had done I think about how the soldier had nailed him in his hands I think about how the soldier had torn his flesh from his body and I still see that when the blood ran down and connected that it had already covered everything that was going to take place y'all are talking to me slap a neighbor high five and say neighbor say when the blood oh, when it starts to flow tell them say immediately what was done started working watch this here there wasn't time for no altar call it wasn't time for no sermonic solution but the moment that the soldier recognized who he was the text says that he began to rejoice and started singing praises he told somebody else we done made a mistake he slapped his chest and said this is the son of God and what bothered me was I saw the soldier how he got restoration but I got Judas who done taken his life it showed me something it showed me that you can't get so caught up in what you done done that you take matters in your own hands but just like Jesus said into the head I commend my spirit
Amen. Slap somebody high five and say, neighbor. Say, if no other reason, I should be praising God today. Tell him it's because the blood covers everything. Ah, y'all ain't talking to nobody. Slap another neighbor high five and help me close this out and say, neighbor. Say, I have messed up some stuff, but tell him I, I'm so glad that the blood done signed my name. That's why the hymn writer say, what can wipe away my sins? It was nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me hold again? It was nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. I need somebody that know that you ain't been perfect to open your mouth and shout out I thank God for the blood I'm reminded of a story that was once told and the story said that there was this young boy and he was in the hospital and this young boy he had gotten sick and the story says that this young boy as he was there uh, the English teacher from the boys school he sent the message to the school teacher at the hospital and told the hospital teacher I need you to go down to his room and I need you to start telling him and working with him on his nouns and his adverbs when the teacher walks in and when the teacher walked in the story says that the teacher was startled because when the teacher saw the boy the teacher did not expect to see the boy burn badly from his head to his feet and so the teacher was startled and the teacher still muscled up and walked in and sat next to the boy and started working with him on his nouns and his adverbs and the story says the boy was a saint much because he was burned badly with a teacher when the teacher finished what the teacher was sent to do the teacher packed up his stuff and started walking back to where he was going and then a few days later one of the nurses saw the teacher and the nurse said what in the world did you do when you went in the boys room the teacher got nervous the teacher started being afraid and the teacher was preparing to give an excuse for what the teacher had done and before the teacher could mumble out a word the nurse said since you left the boy's vital signs have gone to another level listen to me y'all he says since you left he's been talking he's been acting like he feel like going on another level well when I found the situation they tell me that they went back and the teacher said to the little boy what happened and the little boy said when you came to my room I automatically said to myself well it must not be as bad as I thought because they thought enough of you to send you to my room to tell me to work on my nouns and my adverbs in other words I came to tell somebody that while you was yet a sinner Christ died for you slap somebody high five and say neighbor it must not be as bad as I thought God sent his son and they called him Jesus they tell me that he's now hanging there on the cross it was a Friday night and he died he died yes he did stop somebody high five and say neighbor he died all day Friday he died he was dead all 
night Friday he was dead all day Saturday he was dead all Saturday night but look like I can see the breaking of day oh what joy is in my soul because on the third day he got up with all power in his hands slap a neighbor high five and say neighbor come on help me close it say neighbor because he lives I can face tomorrow is there anybody in the house today that's glad that the Lord got up open your mouth and celebrate Grab a neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you're going through, tell them, say, don't give up now. Tell them you come too far. Don't give up now. God is about to do his best work in your life. He helps you for a time such as now. Something is about to happen. Slap a neighbor high five and say, neighbor, I come to tell you that you're on a breaking season and God is about to break some stuff open because you got power. Grab somebody about the head and say, whatever you've been through, you got power. Power to walk right, power to talk right, power to live right, power. Grab somebody else and say, I expect you to win over your battles. Tell them because the blood covers everything. The blood covers your children. The blood covers your job. The blood covers your mind. The blood covers your sin. The blood covers your sin. But the blood somebody ought to have a blood praise right now. Give it a blood praise. Open your mouth and shout because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All my fields are gone. said I know who holds my future and my life is worth the living just somebody ought to open your mouth and give God a praise because you got a reason to live now give God a praise because you got a reason to live. Slap somebody high five and say, neighbor, I almost gave up, but I rose this morning. And I got a resurrecting mind. I got power. If the devil wanted to take me out, he should have done it before I got here tonight. But now, like Paul says, if I be risen with Christ, I got to think of things above. Slap somebody high five and say, take your thoughts higher. Stop thinking like that. Stop believing like that. Stop expecting that. It's time. Go get your mind back. Go get your drive back. The blood. The blood.
Give a lot of three people a high five and tell them I thank God for the blood. Believers in the house to slap somebody high five and tell them if you're looking for me, tell them don't look down there. Tell them because my life just elevated. Everything about me just elevated. Everything about me just went to another level. Everything. at you like you're crazy but just tell them you don't know how close I was to losing my mind but tell them thank God for the blood I should be crazy I should be crazy with all the hell I've been through and all the hell that I've caused but I thank God Somebody ought to support God in this place. Look at somebody in the face and tell them you don't know what I had to go through. Just to get to where I am right now. Tell them, say, grace and mercy kept me. Grace and mercy guided me. Grace and mercy strengthened me. 